I know that, that when I do step out, when I share who Jesus is with neighbors or with friends or, or, or with others in the community, sometimes even with family, you know, there are those times when, when I can just feel Jesus' presence and, and it's like the words just flow up. And sometimes it's just a few words, sometimes it's lots depending on who I'm with. But then I, I know that you know, Jesus never gives up never gives up on me. He never gives up on Peter. So I'm giving away the end of the story right now. Jesus doesn't give up on Peter. Now, now Matthew's story of, of Peter is a really, really hard one. And you might say, hey, wait a minute, but if Peter gets forgiven, then how can it be hard? Well, well it's hard because Matthew doesn't talk about Peter's forgiveness. Matthew just concentrates on Peter's messing up. On Peter's disowning him. And disowning means saying, you know what, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't want anything to do with you. And I don't want anybody to know that, that I know you and, and, and that we know each other. And that's what Peter does. But, but it's kind of strange because just before this, earlier in the evening, Jesus had told Peter, you know what, three times you're going to deny me. You're going you're gonna to disown me. And Peter said, there ain't no way that's ever going to happen. No way. You know what, even if I have to die, I am never going to disown you. I'll never abandon you. And all the other disciples, they kind of jump on the bandwagon. They say, hey, yeah, me too. We would never do that. You know, and then... And then you kind of get into the story where, where after the, the, the Last Supper, you know, Jesus goes into the garden to, to pray, and, and he tells Peter and, and James and John, hey, you know, just stand watch for me. Jesus knows what's coming up. He knows that there's going to be soldiers coming for him. He knows he's got trials to face and everything else that night, but he wants to talk to God, and, and he wants to just, just wants to, to be strengthened for, for what lies ahead. And Peter and James and John, they, they go with Jesus into the inner part of the garden, and, and Jesus goes a little further, and what does Peter and James and John do? They fall asleep. They're not watching. They're tired. Uh, maybe they're full with supper. And, you know, you just kind of take that nap after supper. Uh, they just they couldn't stay awake. Three times they fall asleep. And Jesus just lets them be. And then, and then when the guards come and, and when they're going to take Jesus away, Peter's the one who kind of grabs a sword and, and he cuts off the servants here, the high priest, and, and he's bold and he's brave and everything else. And, and then he sees Jesus heal the servant. And Peter's got to be thinking, wow, you know, wait, this isn't going the way I'm thinking it should go. And, and then they run away. And, and now, G, now Peter has followed Jesus into that courtyard. And, and I just wonder, there's so many questions in this story. How did Peter turn from being so bold and brave to being so afraid and so cowardly so quickly? What was he afraid that, that once they knew he was one of Jesus's followers that they would remember that he was the one who cut off the ear of the servant and, and then they would put him on trial as well and, and, then, and, and Peter knew what was coming. He knew that there was no way Jesus was getting out of this. So was he afraid to die with Jesus even though he had just said hours before he was willing to? So much we don't know about what's going on inside Peter's head. In Matthew's telling of this story, this is the last time in his gospel that we actually hear Matthew talk about Peter by name. We don't hear any words of forgiveness after this story. We're left hanging about Jesus' standing with Jesus. Is Peter going to be made right? You see, we know the answer from, from John, but... But right now, in this story, right now at this time, we've got no clue. What's going to happen? The last we hear of Peter by name in Matthew's Gospel is, then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. 
Immediately a rooster crowed, and, and then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you'll disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Let's sit with that rejection of Jesus by Peter for a moment. See, he became so much more than, I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. Peter even calls down curses to emphasize that he's not connected to Jesus, that there's no way he has anything to do with Jesus. And now Peter's devastated. It's sinking in, you know, what he's done. To emphasize Peter's disowning of Jesus, Matthew follows this story with Judas hanging himself out of his deep sense of guilt and sorrow. And that's where Matthew lets us sit with that pain, with that weeping. So a question, have you ever had times when, when you denied knowing somebody because you were embarrassed of them? How did that make you feel later on? Maybe when you saw them the next day. What went on inside of you? So maybe just share for a moment. So Matthew leaves us with the question, really, is there forgiveness for Peter? Is God's grace and, and the forgiveness that Jesus prays to his father for on the cross when he says, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing, is that for Peter too? There are so many of us who live with these kinds of questions still today. We know the cross. We know Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We know and we'll even say it's for us. We sing about amazing grace. We know Jesus' resurrection from the dead is all about new life for us. But, but still, often our hearts will say, is it really for me? Can I really be forgiven? Am I worthy? Why? Why would Jesus forgive me? I have a hard time forgiving myself. These are heartbreaking questions. And, 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 and they, they point straight down to the brokenness that's in so many of our hearts. And I think, I think we all have those times where we wonder if we can really be forgiven where we really wonder, does God really love us that much? It's hard. See, most people don't plan to fail. A lot of times we fail because we think we're better than we are. We think we're stronger. We think we're smarter. We think we're braver than we really are. And then we go into something and we, we don't really prepare ourselves well enough and we just kind of jump into it and, and then before you know it we mess up and, and unfortunately sometimes then people get hurt many of us don't have a good sense of our own weaknesses when it comes to our own hearts when it comes to what tempts us to what pulls us away to what might cause us to say you know, I'm not really with that Jesus or with that church. You know, let's go do this, this event or this thing anyway. It's amazing to me how easily we find excuses for our sin and, and, and for our failings and, and for how quickly we minimize them, saying it's not really that bad until it rises up and really slaps us in the face with its seriousness. seriousness and its consequences. See, Jesus is about to be executed now. Plans are being made to make sure there is no way that Jesus is getting out of this. 
People are even willing to lie to make sure that Jesus is going to die. And Peter's disowning of Jesus adds to the weight and to the pain of Jesus' sacrifice. It adds to that, to that sin and to that brokenness that Jesus carries to the cross for us. And Peter is a reminder of how quickly we can find ourselves in a position where we might turn our back on Jesus for a whole lot of different reasons. This often happens even after hearing Jesus' warning in Matthew chapter 10. You know that whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. So another question now. Have you ever lost a friendship because you said something cruel and hurtful? Did you try to make it right with that friend again afterwards? How hard was that? Just discuss for a moment. So these words of Jesus saying, you know what, if you acknowledge me, I'll acknowledge you before, before my Father, but if you deny me, I'm going to deny you before my Father in heaven. Those are hard, hard words. They're, they're scary words in a lot of ways. And, and likely these are words that are echoing now in Peter's heart as, as he's weeping bitterly outside the garden. Now, Peter was with Jesus when he had said that. And, and it's amazing how we remember Jesus' words when we mess up. We'll remember all those times Jesus said, don't do that. It's not smart doing that. But then we do it anyway. And then, and then when we do it and we feel guilt, then all of a sudden we remember those words. And, and it's like they come flooding into our, our minds and, and our hearts. And... and and it can lead us to a place where we lose hope. And that's why Jesus went to the cross. Because Jesus isn't done with Peter yet. Jesus' love and grace shines through by going to that cross and by saying on that cross, Father, forgive them. And in that forgiveness, we find hope. It's a costly hope and it's a costly grace. Forgiveness comes at a huge cost to Jesus. On the cross, he, he faces Satan's power while, while carrying the weight of sin and, and brokenness of the world on his shoulders. The cross is filled with physical and, and emotional and spiritual pain as, as our brokenness is, is taken with Jesus into the grave so that new life can rise up out of that grave in the resurrection. So, so we move from Matthew's gospel to John's gospel and John's account of how Peter is shown forgiveness and grace. So Peter has been fishing and they're in the boat with, with other fishermen, probably James and John, I can't remember exactly. And, and Jesus is cooking fish on the shore for breakfast. And he says, come on, I've got breakfast for you. Come join me. So when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And, and Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and, and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Peter is given the opportunity to say three yeses 
to the three no's that he had said those, those weeks before. This is Jesus' way of saying, Peter, you're forgiven. But, but there's some really important stuff that's, that's in this, this meal, in this forgiveness as well. Because Jesus uses a word for love that's called agape. And, and this is a love, this is a love that is deep and it is, it is filled with commitment and, and it's filled with, 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 with deep relationship. And then Peter replies with the word love, philo. And that's a brotherly love. That's a friendship love. So, so Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me like with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and with everything that you are? And, and Peter says, yeah, I love you like a friend. And Jesus says, two times, do you love me? Do you agape love me? And, and Peter says twice, I feel I love you like a friend, like a brother. And then the third time, Jesus says, do you feel love me? Do you love me like a brother, like a friend? And Peter says, yeah. Yeah, I do. I can love you that way. You see, Jesus, he comes to us and, and he meets us in our weakness. He meets us where we're at. And, and, and he says, you know what? I want this agape love. I want this deep love with you. But, but you know what? Let's start with the feel of that. Let's start with this friendship love, this brotherly love. You know what? And then let's grow. Let's grow our relationship. I'm not done with you, he tells us. And that's what he's telling people. And then he says, you know what? Out of this fetal love, you know, now go take care of my sheep. Take care of, of, of my lambs. Watch over my people. I'm giving you, I'm trusting you with this. Jesus turns to Peter, the one who had said three times, I don't know you. And he says, now I'm putting, putting my people, my followers, I'm trusting them to you. See, Jesus, Jesus not only forgives us, he also restores us. He, he gives us the strength that we need. And then when we stumble and we fall, he picks us back up. And he says, I'm still with you. Still, feed my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Watch over them. You know, and I'll help you do that. How hard is it for you? And this is a question. To say I was wrong and I'm sorry. When someone asks you to apologize. And when you do, does that lift a weight off your shoulders? How does that make you feel? So just take those moments, uh, take a few moments. So Peter was broken. We we're in this series called Jars of Clay, and, and Peter was a cracked jar. And now Peter's restored by Jesus. He's renewed and, and forgiven. And his cracks are still visible, but, but they've been repaired. And, and those cracks in many ways make Peter even more beautiful. You know, when Peter talks and, and when he preaches and when he teaches, and when he calls the people at Pentecost to, to follow Jesus, they know that, that Peter doesn't have it all together. They know that, that he, he fails. They know that, that, that he's broken. They know that he's got a messed up life a lot of times in his relationship with Jesus. But they also know that, that Peter never gives up on Jesus because Jesus never gives up on him. And they can see in Peter's life hope. They see in Peter's life what forgiveness, what grace, what mercy looks like. And that gives this, this grace, this mercy, this forgiveness. It gives Peter the, the boldness to be bold for Jesus, to, 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 to be strong even in, in, in what's going to happen and what's coming up. And it's no accident that it's Peter on Pentecost that preaches Jesus to the crowds. And we're reminded that Jesus gave Peter the, the, the name, the rock, way before 
Dwayne Johnson took that name. You know, Jesus said to, to, to Peter, his name was Simon at the, at the time, now I'm going to call you Petros. I call you Rock. And that's because when, when Jesus had asked the disciples, who do people say I am? G Peter had said, you know what, you are the Messiah. You know, you, you, are the, the, you are the Son of God. You are the Savior of the world. And Jesus says, you know what? On your confession, I'm going to build my church. And, and Peter is one of the, the strong rocks that Jesus uses to build the church on Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ. So if you're wrestling with feeling like you don't love Jesus enough, if you're wondering if you can be forgiven, if you're feeling that your sin is way too big for, for, for God to, to stay in relationship with you, if, if you're wondering if Jesus even loves you, remember, remember Peter. Remember how in Peter's brokenness, Jesus comes and says, I agape love you. I love you more than anything in the world, except for my Father. And I'm going to the cross for you. And I know you're only at a place where you can, you can brotherly love me, and that's okay. Because I'm going to keep pouring into you. I am not done with you yet. And, and there will come a day when you will be able to say back to me, I agape love you as well. As you, as you make my forgiveness, as you make my grace real within your heart and within your souls. So God, J Jesus loves you with a deep agape love. And he's not done with you yet. And each of you, each of you can feed the sheep and the lambs around you by pointing them constantly to Jesus and using your own forgiveness, your own experience of grace as a hope to be shared everywhere. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for, for Jesus, for, for his grace, for his mercy, for his forgiveness, for his agape love, for his deep, deep commitment to us and, and for calling us and, and trusting us with, with your church and, and calling us to, to continue to, to share within our community the amazing love and grace and forgiveness of Jesus. So Lord, continue to use us and Lord, bless us so that we can be a blessing. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of Jesus' love for us, that agape love, we also, we also show our love by partnering with, with ministries, you know, both here in, in, in Alberta, within Lacombe and, and around the world, we do it out of love for them so that they can show Jesus' love as well. So our offering this morning is for Evergreen Christian Reformed Church in Fort McMurray. They've had a really rough time this spring with floodings and that, and, and Evergreen Church, our sister church in Fort McMurray, uh, the deacons there are working hard to help families there who've been devastated. So our offerings are going to go to Evergreen to help them be Christ's presence. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that you use us to still feed sheep and to take care of sheep. And we thank you for being able to partner with Evergreen Christian Reformed Church as, as they feed and take care of your sheep in their community as well. So Lord, we ask a blessing on these, on these offerings that they might bless many uh, with your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just one announcement. Uh, this week on our website, on the Facebook page, and in an email, you were sent uh, the procedures for in-person worship that's coming next week. So I encourage you to 
uh, to, to look at them. We will start by doing it by elders list. So uh, your elders will connect with you uh, early in the week to let you know. And you will get your turn uh, soon. So we look forward to that. And we see that as a sign of God's grace as well. So if you're able to stand, I invite you to stand. And we will uh, close with God's blessing. So go in love. Go knowing that you are loved, loved deeply by Jesus Christ, and go to show that love wherever you are this week. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you and bless you.